Well, this is our last lesson on um, complex numbers for a while. I've um, got a picture here of uh, De Moivre, or De Moivre, however you pronounce it. Um, and we're going to start looking at um, a rule that uh, he thought of and um, expanded on. Um, and again, we're looking at operations. By operations, by the way, it means plus, minus, times, divide. Those kind of operations. When you play around with complex numbers. But we're doing so in the modulus argument form again. We saw this last time. And this is where you write a um, complex number um, as Z equals R cos theta. And usually with a bracket here, plus I sine theta. But I also showed you two other ways of writing the same thing. I said Z could be written as R C I S theta. And I've even seen this one. I'm not sure if it comes up in the book. But just where you just say what r is and what theta is. And in many ways, that's the easiest one to do. But to be honest, yeah, the ones I've seen most of are like this. So let's have a look. And a little start for you. Now, sometimes it says you are required to give the argument in one particular way. We've seen this last time. From this is from minus pi to pi. And other times, you're meant to give the argument from 0 to 2 pi. So I suppose this, these questions are just meant to make sure you know what's going on. So um, this argument it says is 8.2. Now, hang on a bit. 8.2 is actually very big. 8.2 is going round that there, all the way round is 2 pi. I know that that's 6.28. So 8.2 must go past that, and I don't know how much further. So if I was doing this, I think I'd first of all work out what um, if I was to take 6.28 2 pi off of it. I don't know why I've written 2 pi um, 6.28. Let's write 2 pi. It's a much better, more precise answer. So if I was doing that, I'd get 8.2 minus 2 pi. I get 1.92. So this is much better to write arg z equals 1.92. Now. Again, just bear in mind, um, it says write it between pi and minus pi. So if you go above 3.14 or below minus 3.14, you're kind of out of the interval. You've got to put it back in the interval. This is within the interval, so that's okay. Um, I'll, I'll just do a few. I may even end up doing all of these. So first of all, um, I'm looking at this. I'm thinking 7 pi by 6. That seems as if that's too small. Because obviously 6 pi by 6 is 1 pi. Well, they've got a minus there. So again, if I was just to draw a map, of, uh, a, a little diagram of 6 pi by 6, 7 pi by 6, sorry, it's negative, so it's going this way around, and it's going there. It's going past it into that. And of course, it wants it, so it doesn't go beyond the pi line, if you like. This is the pi line over here. So on that basis, I'm thinking, well, go this way around instead. And I think that's 5 pi by 6, if you do that. Um, this last one, it says 17 pi by 3. So all the time, just looking. How many... Look at that. 17 pi by 3. Now, 6 pi by 3 is all the way around. Because 6 pi by 3 equals 2 pi. So I've gone 2 pi around. That's 6. I've gone around again. That's 12. That's 18 pi by 3. Oh, hang on a bit. I've only got 17. So I'm a little bit shy of there. And I think, therefore, that this is equal to minus pi by 3. I'm a little bit shy of the third loop, if you like. And, of course, I'm trying to measure it between pi and minus pi. So that's now right. Next question says, do exactly the same thing, but within the interval 0 to 2 pi. So if it's not in the interval 0 to 2 pi, put it in the right interval. Minus 2.1. Well, it's a negative straight away. So as soon as it's a negative, what's that doing? It's basically going this way around. And 1.57 is pi by 2. So that's minus 1.57. It's somewhere over there. So I'm just thinking to myself, if I've got to go 0 to 2 pi, this angle here would be 2 pi minus that 2.1. Um, let's do that with a calculator. 2 pi minus 2.1 equals, I get 4.18. Next one, 22 pi by 3 again. So it's back to one of those where you're just going around. 22 
So obviously you go around lots and lots and lots and lots of times. When I've done 21 pi by 3, that's equivalent to... Actually, I'm going to have to go 18 pi by 3. That's we're thinking the whole loops, and that's 2 pi's worth, which is, as I said, 6 pi by 3. So once I've done three loops, I've still got four thirds to go. And three thirds takes me. I think that's almost up to there. I think this is, as I say, four thirds of pi past the 18 pi by 3. And therefore that's it. And this one, 6 pi by 5. Again, 5 pi by 5 is obviously half a turn. But I think that is OK, because you can go from 0 to 2 pi. I think that is simply 6 pi by 5. It doesn't go out of the 0 to 2 pi range. I don't know what the answers are. Well, that's right. Good. At least we've got that one. That was the weirdest one. 4.18, 1.92, 5 pi by 6. Yeah, they're all fine. So we like those. So just a reminder of what we said last time, we can write a complex number either as its Cartesian form. This is often called Cartesian. We don't like that. Let's try again. Cartesian, which it basically means it has a coordinate on this. Um, instead, we write it in its modulus argument form. And its modulus argument form can be written like this, like this. Or even like this. Um, some rules. So the rule that we're going to first look at is basically what happens if I multiply two complex numbers together. And I'm going to call my complex numbers Z and W. And if I multiply Z and W together, what happens to the modulus? Well, this tells me that the modulus I get from the multiplied answer is equal to the answer what happens when you multiply them together. It's kind of fairly obvious. So if I have mod z equals 4 and mod w equals 3, if I times z by w and find its modulus, I'll get 12. That's no great shocks. But the big shock is this one here, though. This is a shock. Um, if I find the argument of z, let's make up an angle. I'm going to say it's 0 0.3. Uh, radians and the argument of w is 1.6 then this is the surprise the argument of zw is equal to 1.9 notice what you do you have to add them together you don't times them even though it's times here you add these together that's what this rule tells us so you have to take that on board and so i've given um uh, a couple of examples there um so if I just show do it so you can re see those easily, it says if Z is 2 CIS 1.3, you can see I'll give you the modulus and I give you the modulus here. I give you the argument, I give you the argument. But if I times them together, I get 8. Well, that's no surprise, 2 falls are 8. But the CIS 3.8, the angle is 3.8, the argument is 3.8. And that is a surprise because we haven't multiplied them, we've added them. Rule 2. So this basically says, what happens if you divide them? Well, not surprisingly, if you divide the uh, moduluses, you get the same answers you would expect to get. But look at this. It's a minus if you play around with the angle. So the argument is, using these same things up here, we've got Z is 2 and W is 4 for the arguments. Notice 2 divided by 4 is 0 0.5. So that's worked. But the argument is 1.3 and 2.5. Notice I've taken those away. And I've ended up with minus 1.2. That is a surprise. The final rule says, what if you raise it to a power? And again, not unsurprisingly, z to the n, the modulus of that, equals the modulus of z to the n. This is almost like the, um, the log rule, I think. The, like the, the n comes to the front for the power, for the, um, for the argument. So here's my example. Again, remember that Z I said was 2 CIS 1.3. So if I do Z to the 6, Z to the 6 becomes, well, I have to do 2 to the 6 CIS. And my argument will be 6 times the 1.3. And 6 1.3 is a 7.8, you see. 
Um, now, 7.8 is actually a very big number. It goes beyond, um, you know, 2 pi. So that's why I then adjust it down. Because remember, if you go past 6.28, if you go past 2 pi, you run out of space and you come back again. So you've got 1.52 left in that example. So the length is still 64. The angle argument is 7.8 or better written as 1.52. So here's some examples of this. Evaluate the following. Well, all we're going to do is follow those rules. It says I've got um, a complex number of 5 uh, as a modulus. And I times it by a complex number of modulus 2. Well, the answer will be 10. What about... I'm going to write CIS because I'm lazy. And um, what about the angle? Well, the angle is pi by 4 here. So my argument is pi by 4. My argument is 2 pi by 3. And if I times them, I add them. So all I've got to do now is go pi by 4 plus 2 pi by 3. Now, you might as well do it on the calculator, but clearly you could do it in your head. So I'm going to do a quarter plus two thirds. I'll ignore the um, pies, and I get 11 twelfths. So it's 11 pi by 12. And that's my argument. Is that, now it says between minus pi and pi, that is under pi, so that's okay. Now what do we do in this one? It's exactly the same numbers, but you're now dividing. So we just divide them. It's 2.5. 5 over 2, doesn't matter. And now I take them away. So if I do that, if I take those away, what do I get as an angle? It's a quarter pi. And now it's I'm subtracting. Let's do this properly. So really what you're doing is you're times in that. You're saying I've got a 3 pi by 12 minus 8 pi by 12 is minus 5 pi, 5 by 12. And I think that again is within my allowable range for the um, argument. It says from minus pi to pi, so that's okay. Um, okay, a different one now. Cos of pi by 2. Well, then notice there's no r here. There's, there's, I'm missing a number, so that must be 1, and that must be 1. Okay, so 1 times by 1 is 1. So there you go, that was that bit done. Um, and then what's my CIS? What's my... Well, I've got an argument of pi by 2 and pi by 5. Well, I'm times them, so I add them. So that will give me... Um, I think 7 pi by 10. And when I divide them, again, it's 1 divided by 1, so that's equal 1. By the way, I bet no one writes that. But, you know, I have 1 CIS, and I've got to subtract them now. This is 5 pi by 10. Take away 2 pi by 10. I reckon 3 pi by 10 when you do that subtraction of the angles. And the last one is a power one. Well, I showed you what happens with the power. You do 3 to the power of 4 to work out its modulus. And then I do CIS, and I do 4 times by pi by 6. So what's that give me? 3 to the 4 is 81. CIS, 2 thirds of pi. And I was lucky all of those, I think, were within this interval. So I didn't have to redo any of them. Um, see if those answers are right. 81, that was right. Yes, and I think I've got all those right. A few things to note, um, and this will help you when you do the uh, questions, I think, in the textbook. We sometimes write r cos theta minus i sine theta. And basically, it's because it is actually equal to this thing down here. Um, and you're welcome to check this on your calculator now. We've got a minute or so to do it before the video ends. So... The idea of this is, if you do the sine of a negative number, it ends up being the minus of the sine of the original, you know, the, the, or the angle without. So if I do, for instance, in degrees even, sine of minus 30, I get minus 0 0.5. And if I do um, sine of 30, I get 0 0.5. So you can see, well, let's chuck a minus in there and a minus in there, and you get the same answer. Minus sine 30 is the same as sine of minus 30. That's always true. But cos, actually, it's different. It's cos of minus a half pi in now and radians. It's equal to cos of a half pi. So that leads us to be able to say this, that the sine, if I've got a negative angle, will just bring a minus to the front, but the cos will stay the same. And so if I start with that, I can get rid of that, and I can replace it with this alternative form. 
So just look out for that. And for that reason, um, I, I think you'll see a few of those. We're doing exercise 4G. We'll practice a few more if we need them in class. And uh, 4G will be the end of complex numbers in year 12. So that's about the limit of what we need. Okay, thanks.